Hey, welcome back, Learn to Code Nation. Uh, thanks for joining once again. Uh, this is a chance to walk through the code that's required to actually consume appsettings.json files inside of a .NET Core console application. Now, there are a few dependencies that we're going to need, um, and then we're going to jump right into the actual code uh, required for it. You're going to need Microsoft.Extensions.Configuration.json, Extensions.Login.Configuration, and Extensions.Login.Console. The reason for that is because we're going to have to actually log something to the console to make sure it's working. Uh, and so let's just jump right into the code here. At the very beginning of this um, entry point, we see that we're building some configuration and we're adding a JSON file called appsettings.json. Now before we go any further, here is our appsettings.json, but there's one caveat to make this work and this oftentimes gets missed and that is the copy to output directory needs to at least be copy always. You could technically set it to uh, copy if newer if you wanted, but it has to be one of those two at least because you need to get this into the output directory. Uh, of course, you can get more advanced with where you drop those JSON files, uh, but this is the easiest way to get this up and running. Okay, so the build command just builds our configuration for us so that we can start using it, so we can start reading the configuration. Right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually parse all of our settings into this settings class. Let's go take a peek at that guy. So the settings class is really a class hierarchy here that looks just like our app settings.json file. So if we take a peek at that one more time, we'll notice we have an empty connection strings section, logging section with some data, and an empty app settings section. So if we take a look at this settings class, we have a connection strings property that matches the connection strings section. We have a logging property that matches the logging section and then app settings. Now the one we're gonna take a look at is this logging section real quick. So what we did was mirror it basically. So we created a class for console settings, right? And there's our console. And then we created a class for log level settings right that way we could bring in the log levels and so here's the default system and Microsoft log levels that we see here okay and those are um, a log level enum now up here above we have the log level property which you see here which is a property of the console settings which you see here the console right which is a property of the logging which you see the logging property here. So if if it makes sense, you're just building a hierarchy of these settings. And it effectively will do the rest on its own. Now, back to the code in program. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell it, take the configuration and figure out how to deserialize it into this settings file. And we're not going to give it a particular section because we want to deserialize all of them. The next thing we're going to do is set up logging. We're not going to dive into this in this video, but you'll see here uh, that we're setting up a service collection. We're adding logging to that service collection. We're specifically reading the configuration here and pulling the logging section. Okay. And also we're adding console logging so that way we have a, an actual um, subscriber or provider to log information to. Uh, and then we're going to build this service provider. Uh, there'll be another video on dependency injection where we can discuss just what dependency injection is as far as the built-in stuff for .NET Core uh, and how you can use it. So we're going to go grab an iLogger uh, for this particular class program. And we're going to log a debug setting. And that debug is going to be the settings themselves. Now, one last piece we're going to dive into here is the fact that I overrode the two string okay of the settings class so that it serialized all of the settings to JSON 
and wrote them in an indented fashion so that we can read it. It's not just a, you know, a, a dump without any, um, you know, carriage returns or anything like that. Now, the other thing that I did do, because these are enums, is I used the built-in JSON string enum converter so that way it will log them as actual strings, not as their integral values. Okay, and so what we do is then finally the last thing is we do the service provider dot dispose. This is a little tip, little trick. If you do not do this at the end of your program, you're going to miss some logs. They're not all going to get flushed. Uh, it's just because that logging is an asynchronous operation, uh, and so you need to let it dispose and finish all of those operations. Okay, that's it. This is as complex as it gets for the basic setup so that you can use appsettings.json. As you can imagine, if you had other app settings, right, then you could set those app settings in the class for app settings in here and then obviously have real settings down here, right? So if we look here and run this guy, what do we get? We get a debug log here at the top with our settings. You'll see it's pulled in null for connection strings because we didn't have any uh, anything in that section. Same for app settings, but here in logging, you in fact see effectively what you see in the JSON file. And that's because it read it in properly and you're able to now use uh, your app settings.json. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope it helped and I'll see you next time.